Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Hard 100, a video series documenting the culling of my collection from what it is to what it is going to be. We have made a bunch of videos, and we have also had some death matches, and we've had some just games that I've loved, games that I've hated, but very rarely do I have a situation where I have two games that I genuinely like. And I'm going to have to see one of those go. So today what we're going to do is a Hard 100 memorial service in remembrance of a passing of the torch if you will there was a game in my collection that i have played the shit out of the box is beaten to hell it's got a rubber band holding it together and it's seen better days it's seen the best days and that game was phenomenal but i feel like no one ever wants to play it again because we played it so much there's also the new kid on the block the up-and-comer as it were the person who is coming in and making all our old dreams come true making us feel like like we did back then. So when an old timer in professional wrestling decides that they're on their way out, they pass the torch to an up and comer. Someone who they think is really gonna make it. So today, ladies and gentlemen, the resistance and all of its glorious expansions and its beat up box and everything is finally going to pass the torch to Patriots and Redcoats. The Resistance by Don Exridge is a social deduction game to end all social deduction games. You played this game, I've played this game, everyone's played Resistance, everyone's gonna say Avalon is better because it comes with the Assassin and the Morgan card, but you get that in this Resistance as well. I also have the Hidden Intent and the other expansion in here, and this game has seen many, many plays over many, many days. Also, everyone fucking has it, so hmm. Now, the Resistance is basically the blueprint for what all social deduction games are these days. I know there is Werewolf, but this one really set the bar. So in Resistance, what you are doing is you are either a member of the Resistance or you are a member of the Greedy Greedy Corporation. Now, the game is very weird, and my only complaint with the theme of the game is that you are not a member of the Resistance infiltrating the Greedy Corporation. You have the Greedy Corporation infiltrating your little Resistance, and you have to try to figure out who the spy is. Bottom line is, some of you are good guys, some of you are bad guys, you have to figure out who, but the fun thing is, all of the bad guys know who all of the other bad guys are. And if you are playing with the Merlin variant, the Merlin character knows who all of the bad guys are as well. So they're trying to steer the conversation in a certain way without making it seem like they know, because if they do know, then the assassin at the end of the game can pick the Merlin and the assassins win regardless. And what you're essentially doing is on your turn, you're going to select a couple of people to go on a mission. And on that mission, they are going to either, everyone's gonna to agree to send them or not, or disagree to send them. And then they're gonna be given a pass and a fail card. Everyone takes one card, gives it to the, I guess, dealer. And then they shuffle them up and reveal. And if it's all passed, they pass the mission. Congratulations. But if they failed, then everyone starts throwing out accusations. You did it. No, you did it. No, you did it. Oh, you did it, didn't you? And then that counts as a failed mission. And whoever has the first to four missions or a certain number of missions wins. It is so good, it hurts. However, we have a new kid on the block. We have Patriots and Redcoats. This is a game by Green Feet Games, and the designer is not on the box, so... Okay. This game has you doing a very similar thing. You are either a member of the Patriots or the Redcoats in the American Revolution. Now, the theme might not be a scientifically dystopian woo, but it's still a theme that everyone can understand. If you're a member of the Patriots or the Redcoats, it doesn't matter. You're just trying to be the first to four victories for your side. This works a bit differently. Instead of it being given a card that has your identity and then you figuring it out, your identity is based on a trio of cards in front of you. If you have more Patriots than Redcoats in front of you, you are them. If you have more uh, Redcoats than Patriots, you're a Redcoat. The exception is if you are dealt one of the leader cards, either the King George or the George Washington, in which case it doesn't matter what those other cards are, you're a Patriot, damn it, or you're a red coat, damn it. And then there's also spies in there that can be used to try to find out who the leader is and then assassinate them. It's a bit harder than it sounds, but it's actually a good time and you'll find out pretty quickly how it goes. On your turn, you're not necessarily sending people on missions. There is that, but that's later. What you're actually doing is you are drawing a card and that card is going to be one of a handful of things. It's either gonna be like a skip a turn, those kind of things, but it's either gonna have a spy eye on it or a conceal on it. And you're gonna take that spy eye, you're gonna look around the table and you're gonna put it in front of somebody. And then 
If they get three spy eyes, they have to flip over a card of their choice. If they ever have to flip over the leader, then they lose. So it's just a really good, like, mm, trying to figure out who everyone is slowly. And another type of card is a conceal where they can kind of take that away. Because in a beautiful turn of events set forth by the resistance, the Patriot leader knows who the Patriot spy is, and the Redcoat leader knows who the Redcoat spy is if you have enough players in the game. So there is some information that is already out there that is known. And then at the uh, once everyone has done a card and it gets back to the main person, to the first player, then he calls a war council. This is very similar to what the resistance does where he sends people on missions. He votes someone to be the leader of the war council and everyone thumbs up and thumbs down. And if it thumbs down, a little tracker moves forward and he gets to the end, you gotta draw one at random. And if not, then he takes three tiles, looks at them. These tiles are gonna either say red coat victory or patriot victory. He's gonna discard one of them without anyone seeing and hand the other two face down to the other person. Other person's gonna look at them, discard one, and then reveal it. Now, at that point, people can start throwing accusations because you can't talk while the council's going on. You just, hmm, 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 hmm. And then you go, oh, he handed me two red coats. I had no choice but to do a red coat. Actually, no, I didn't do that. You're lying. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna get you. And it's the whole, that whole kind of thing. And this really focuses the screaming uh, between two people as opposed to a whole bunch of team that went on depending on all kinds of, so this, is probably the wrong way to do this. So let's, because on the shoulders of giants, Patriots and Redcoats will stand. Resistance, as I mentioned, has run its course. It's been played so many times, I will be sad to see it go, but its legacy is not lost on gaming in general. Patriots and Redcoats, ba -ba -da -ba -dam, is a game that is a has some fresh ideas to it, and it takes some of the things that the Resistance did and improves on them while leaving back some of the fluff and funk. Let's do some quick housekeeping. First up, the Resistance. Resistance ages 13 and up. Okay, don't know why. Five to 10 players. Now here is another problem that we've had with the Resistance. The sweet spot for this game is five, six, or seven players. That is when I've had the most fun playing. Once you get up to a eight, nine, or 10 player count, even with all the expansions and extra rules, because there are extra rules out the ass, you can add so much variety to this game. But by the time all that variety came out, everyone was done. But when you get up to the higher player count, some people just get skipped over and the game could end before everyone has a chance to really be the commander. It's too bloated. Playable, but shouldn't be played. And then 30 minutes, the game is very short. Usually when you play a game of the resistance, you play four or five games of the resistance. So it says 30 minutes, but we've had full on sessions that's gone two or three hours. This is so good and so fun. Mm. Patriots and Redcoats. We have ages eight and up again. Okay, uh, four to 10 players. We played this with five and six. Now at five and six, it was great. If it goes up to 10, you might run into a similar situation where not everyone gets to be the commander, but it's very, very quick and everyone can talk and everyone is on equal footing at the beginning, but I recommend, I don't recommend anything. And then 15 to 25 minutes, it is a very short game. We played it two or three times because as soon as someone got caught out, they're like, oh, I'm gonna get you. A really cool thing about this is the spy can actually assassinate a player. He assassinates not, not a card, a player, and then he takes himself out as well. So there is some player elimination, but it's voluntary. So for example, at one point, I figured out who the leader was. And I was like, hmm, I'm gonna play a card to reveal that last card, and you'll have to reveal it, and then we will win. And as soon as I was going to reach for them, he flipped his card and said he killed me. And he also killed himself. And I was like, oh no! And it was great. And if I had a turncoat card, there's a way that you can kind of block that and keep yourself from being killed, even if you're the one doing the killing. You like pull someone in front of you and oh, they take a bullet. I admittedly enjoy the theme of Patriots from Redcoats a lot more. As I get older, I have an appreciation for American history and history in general. Uh, something that I did not have when I was a kid. So if I was, when I was younger, Resistance was awesome. It's a dystopian future. They use this theme for fucking everything. They have a coup and all kinds of stuff. It's just generic sci-fi. Patriots of Redcoats is generic American history. Here is the passing of the torch. What will I miss most about the Resistance? Probably all of the yelling that this game immediately creates. So the atmosphere at the table where everyone knows that someone is 
there's a fucking spy around here. Which one of you bitches is the spy? There's at least two of them. Who is it? And in this one, there is always going to be a minimum of one spy or a maximum of everyone but one spy. So it's kind of like, uh, we're not sure exactly how many spies are in this one, but in this one we always know there's an exact amount. And that is a very nice touch. This gets the table yelling to happen immediately. And this one, the table yelling takes a little bit to get started, but once it starts, it's a good time. So I will miss the Resistance greatly. The Resistance, a beautiful, beautiful game. It's right for your shelf. If you have never played The Resistance, get off your ass and go buy a copy of The Resistance because this Resistance, unfortunately, is out of my hard 100. It will be missed. It is a beautiful game. It has gotten played so much, but it's time to pass the torch to Patriots and Red Coach, which is in the hard 100. This is the new standard at which I will grade all social deduction games. Now we've talked about a lot of social deduction and we will talk about a lot of social deduction games, but those aren't really trying to emulate what the resistance does. Those games are essentially either werewolf or some kind of super easy basic version of it, or they try to do something new and they go really far in that direction. But the resistance and Patriots and Redcoats are really trying to accomplish the same thing. So resistance, you've lived a long life, Go and enjoy your retirement because Patriots and Redcoats is carrying that torch until the next great thing comes along. And right now, that great thing is Patriots and Redcoats. Bum, bum, ba -dum, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Peace out.